this isn't a good job. This job isn't going to get me anywhere. I'm really happy about it. Like, oh, yeah. fuck, this is a shit job. But there's good karma in this world, man. It's the things that look shiny. Hey, hey, come look at me. Come over yeah. here. But it's so funny because to be to stand out, to be different, all you really have to do is just be honest. What's up, guys? Today's a bit of an update on what's been happening in our lives. We're just going to talk about what's been happening and then end up philosophizing about it because we are philo philosophical you know we haven't seen each other in two weeks or so but a lot a lot has been going on behind the scene you know we're trying to get our life together um we both got our low own journey and development but most importantly most importantly we all got our own progress we all made made grounds i recently got a job at a ubc campus i work as a um, parking compliance officer you know, it ain't much. It is kind of a shit title. But I tell you what, man. Two things I notice immediately working there. One is the work environment, dude. The people I work with are so chill. They are so nice. I remember I made this joke. So, uh, not a joke, but it was this realization. Uh, I made a mistake. Cause, you know, first time on the job, you make a lot of mistakes. So I made a mistake. And I was like, oh, dang. Sorry, because the supervisor's got to avoid the ticket. But then they're like, what are you apologizing for? It's no big deal. So I'm like, so I was like to him, I was like, so it's okay. Like, you know, I didn't mean to make a mistake. And he's like, nah, it's all right, man. Don't even worry about it. If the guy reports it in, we'll just cancel the ticket. And, it, you know, that was like, a, that was my second day on the job, right? And that's when I realized that, whoa, dude, this job, the work environment is perfect, man. There's no toxicity. Everyone's just chill, man. You're doing your job. There's a guy I work eight hour shifts, man. He's only ticketing six people for eight hours and nothing happens to him. If you're sick, you just call in sick. You don't need to find. I remember at my old job, right? You need to find a replacement for it at this place, bro. You just call in sick and they're okay with that. And and that's when I realized like, whoa, dude, this is like a 180 from like my time at my previous job, man. You know, I'm not going to like say what i did before i was a dispatcher but like i didn't do i didn't have to do much at work i just had to answer phone calls but it's it's crazy at this job there is a bit of you know labor involved you got to walk around a lot but one thing that's one thing that's really like that hit me hard is you look forward to working at a job when the work environment's really nice you're doing something that you feel like is very rewarding and that leads me to my second point this job so far, on my third day working there, the guy was like, so, you know, we looked over your profile and um, we both kind of agreed, you know, them both as in the supervisor and the manager, that uh, I'm probably not going to stay at that job for long. And he's like, so, you, you know, you're probably looking to transfer out, right? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm not too sure what to do yet, but, you know, I hope I don't have to, uh, I'd like, I was trying to be polite about it. I'm like, yeah, you know, this is kind of a stepping stone. I'll, I'm willing to admit it. You know, I don't want to lowball you guys. Uh, build your hopes. I was like, hey, don't even worry about it, man. A lot of people do that. It's nice that you're working here. Listen, you just work three months and we'll help you to transfer out to a different department if you want to. Um, and the guy was just so nice about it, man. And he was telling me working at UBC, you can, they, they hire internally and to go from one place to another, it gets a lot easier once you start working for them. And it was that moment I realized, dude, I was actually like, yes, this isn't a good job, but I was working towards something. And there's, there's a tons of benefit that comes in return. And I was so happy about like actually being able to work towards something that ultimately benefits me in the future. I think a lot of times looking back, you know, when we think of what jobs to take, we kind of forget that you're working towards something that ultimately benefits you if you pick the right path. You know, we kind of overlook that aspect. So that's what's been going on with me lately, man. I, I got a job. Well, that's it. the appearance of the job right because i make fun of this guy i've been making fun of him <laughs> damn ball buster calling him a fucking a parking enforcer uh -huh. and shit i have a running joke it's like imagine knowing someone who's a parking enforcer. like they must have no friends and so i keep making jokes about that but like honestly like good for him because um you know it's it's crazy because a lot of the times you know when you think you're looking for a job it's like appearances can this what's delude you um appearances are very sneaky because it's easy to think that some like you know 
some corporate sales job or whatever mm -hmm. maybe you make 150k 200k but like it's in a competitive like environment to the point where it's like toxic right yeah it's like it doesn't matter that even if you make that much it's like if you hate being there it's like it's it's no good right versus say if you just work some like meh job and make 80k a month but then you know the culture is good people there are nice who actually treat you like an actual you know have yeah. respect for you and stuff and there's room for growth then it's like more power to you man like i think it's at the end of the day it's much better to work at the second job than the first one all things considered um even though every, like people will tell you otherwise because it's like people don't i think we become so disillusioned by the um, by the, the the thought of getting paid more that we forget all of our morals yeah. all of our ethics all of our principles and what we stand for as people we sell our souls for money um and and it's great because this guy gets opportunity um, paid for his tuition, um, like what twelve credits per year, right? That's that's yeah. fucking like I get twelve that's credits. For like free. He gets to grow while he's you know working his way up, right? So yeah. uh, he's gonna pursue his masters and stuff. Yeah, I I think working at this job, one thing you know, um, once I discovered the benefit of working at this job, the free benefits that comes with it, it actually gave me it revitalized my. Um, it gave me the courage to actually want to take a master's and want to continue studying because, you know, before um, I didn't want to take, you know, I wanted a job that could straight up benefit my career. I didn't want a job that was going to be like, that wasn't going to benefit me. So when I took this job, it was honestly because I could not find another fucking job. Right. Because I think when you see a job like this, you're like, this job isn't going to get me anywhere. No. Well, no, 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 actually... No. Three months later, you can transfer to any department you want. And I think this is actually a great stepping stone because it's so much easier to get hired from internally than from externally. Yeah. And if you already have that, got you already got into the the boys club, so to speak, My right? Oh, it's inside of her. Yeah, if you're already if you're already in in the club, right? Yeah. It's now you can start pivoting to whatever um Yeah, exactly. Department you want to go into and then like that's that will probably that'll be good for actually pursuing the the kind of path you want to take, right? Yeah. Um, like, whereas like on the surface, the appearances, it, it, it didn't seem like taking this would benefit you in any way. Right. You're just like, Oh, this is just a temporary thing. Like, oh, yeah. fuck, this is a shit job, you know, but you just like, it's like things like this. It's like, don't be so sure that they're so shit. Exactly. Right? A you lot know, of times it's the things that look shiny that are actually false and, and, and fraudulent within. Mm -hmm. And it's the stuff that, that, you know, it's just kind of humble. It's just kind yeah. of like there, but it's exactly. not like, it's not shouting at you. Hey, Hey, come look at me. Come over yeah. here. That, that holds the hidden gem. Exactly. Right? You know, remember after that trip we went on to Coltis Lake, man, that's when I accepted the job. Because inside, of, I, I noticed that day, you know, mm. I'm, I'm going to be very humble with things, man. And like, this is this is the best I could get. Because listen, the apartment, the, the uh, UBC put up a bunch of jobs. I applied to like eight or 10 of them. Mm -hmm. This is the only one that got back to me. You know, I can be very high and mighty about it and be like, well, that's not good enough. I'm not taking this job. Or I could take this job, man. That's what I... That's what I said to myself. I'm going to take it one step at a time. And you know what, man? Maybe maybe this is just pure coincidence and I'm linking it together. But there's good karma in this world, man. There's good to being humbleness within you. I'm For telling sure. you. I, I traded this job. Sure. I was very humble about it. You know, they For looked sure. at my credential. They're like, why don't you get a job at PolySci? Sure. How do you see these jobs benefit you? And I, I just told them, like, listen, uh, I'm going to be honest. I remember the job interview I told them. Uh, the guy's like, so how do you see this job connect to you, your career in the future? And I told him, listen, um, you know, I could tell you that this helps me out with customer service, communications, whatever. You know, that's all true. And, oh, and I, but I told him honestly at that point, I'm like, listen, I apply for a bunch of jobs. You guys are only people. You guys are the only people that accepted my offer, and I'm I'm gonna, I'm very humble about it. Um, and I I didn't give any bullshit answer because you know that's, people that's people so that work good. work HR once you yeah. hear these. Typical it's all stuff. bullshit. Yeah, um, and I just told him, "Listen, right. I'm gonna, if I'm if I'm part of your team, I'm bringing professionalism, and I'm going to work here, um, bring the best I, I can." Two days ago, well, actually last Friday, um, I spoke to my my boss. Uh, she's a nice lady, you know. She said, "Well, we had um, we had six rounds of interview, and uh, we ended up selecting two people." And we ended up picking you because mm. you you aced all your interview questions and you seem like a good fit. Um, and mm -hmm. you know that that's nice to hear because to me, you know, right. 
I know I got a long way to go. Well, you no, know? it's so funny because to be to stand out, to be different, all you really have to do is just be honest. Exactly. Uh, like, because these people are so used to hearing the same bullshit responses. It's like, yeah, well, this job, it's great stepping stone in development, yeah. customer service. And the, it's like, <laughs> dude, they get sick and tired of they it. They do. Right. They but if you're just honest do. with them and just like, you know what, like, like be humble. Humility is not valued these days. People, because people think you have to appear all like big and like, yeah, you know, put up a front. But what people really admire is vulnerability and honesty. And if you can show them you're transparent, you're honest and you're truthful and you are, right. you, you have traits of humility, then they trust you. Exactly. Right? They want to trust the people. Who, let, let me tell you something else, bro. Uh, I went to two job interviews where I got to the final stage. One of them I got declined. The other one I got accepted, right? The other job I was going to work as a manager, well, in training to, to run my own branch for a car rental place. Um, you know, when I when I got rejected by it, I felt very sad by it, right? I was uh-huh. like, oh, man, come on. I could totally do this work. Uh-huh. Um, but I tell you what, man, once you actually get a job that you're really happy about, the, this is how I see it, right? I don't feel bad that they rejected me because in hindsight... I really wanted that job. So for the job interview, you know, I told them like, listen, I'm bringing blah, 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 blah. I don't know. I don't actually have any sales experience on that front, uh, which is, which is probably why they rejected me, uh-huh. but I was overselling myself. And I thinking back, if I had that job, I'll be working tires, pi- like I- excessively over the top trying to compensate. And I don't have to do that at this current job because I'm actually worth it. You know? I think a lot of people out there they get bitter about they get bitter about not getting a job so they start lying on their resume they stop being honest with themselves this is what's funny right my other coworker he got a job at another taxi place right um and we ended up finding out a lot of our previous coworkers who's lied about working at the place that he currently works at never actually worked there they don't even have a record of them one person claimed they were the manager there. They don't even know her. So, like, w- that's probably why a lot of, like, mid-level management is so bad. Because <laughs> a lot of these managements are, are lying about their credentials, their criteria. Yeah. And, hey. you know, I understand, right? You got to do what you got to do to feed, feed the kids, pay the bills. But I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, this job ain't much that I have right now. But I'm really happy about it. For once, I'm actually like working towards something i'm happy about it. i'm happy i'm actually working progress like dude it was funny the guy who came to clear out his locker so i could use his locker um i asked how long he's worked there my supervisor he's you know he's worked there for five months and i'm like five months and he transferred out they're like yeah i was like bro what he's like yeah you, you just right. once you become a full-time employee or once you work 65 right. work days which is nothing. Well, that institution is set up for growth, right? Which is a yeah. good thing. It's just, it's kind of shit for students, I'll be honest. I'm not even going to, like, yeah. put up a front because I work for them. If you're a student at UBC, I'm sorry, bro. You, <laughs> you like, I, so I taught, I, I went to see my professor from Conklin, right? Yeah. Him and I had a really close relationship. Like, we were students to, to professor, you know, mentor to apprentice. Um, it's a small university, so the class size is like 10 students to one professor kind of thing. And I was taking political science. One thing I loved was you get to know the professor very well because it's very personal. So you don't feel like there's a big distance between you, the Mm, student, and the prof. At UBC, it's the other way around. No matter how friendly the prof was, you kind of looked at them with power. It's a huge university. UBC is huge, man. I'm talking about lecture halls. People squeeze into a class, one professor. Everyone's afraid to speak, especially in poli-sci. The issue is, you know, UBC is a liberal place. A lot of people are afraid to speak up their thoughts, right? It was weird. People don't realize it's the institution that dictates the environment. The same prof from my old university, Fontland, Mm -hmm. he also taught at UBC for a while. And he told me the same thing. Like, students at different campus will behave differently, Mm. even though it's the same guy. So, um, should overheat him. Jesus. So, yeah, I guess end off. End off before my phone fucking overheats. Yeah. But if it overheats, just dip it in water or pee on it. But seriously, touch that, man. That's why I don't understand why they keep making GoPros in black. 
I know why. It's because they it deflects a lot of. Well, it, that was kind of Harry's update. You know, from from now on, maybe we'll just go on. We'll we'll go by Big Yang and Little Yang. <laughs> it's just because we're. So our, both our last names are Yang, and then so, yeah. So this guy will be Big Yang, and then I'll be Little Yang from now on, I guess. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll have my story come up in the in the next video. For this one, we'll just. Uh, yeah. 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 So that, yeah. yeah, that's what we got a lot. Yeah. We got a lot in common. Maybe this world meant to put us together. There's a lot of things in life that uh you know we kind of look past. Yeah. Numerology, whatever. Yeah. And uh, one thing I want to note on this channel is whenever we speak about certain things, it's like. Say, for example, we say, it's like, and then this job was like really chill. And it's like the attitude, the environment wasn't, you got to work hard. I didn't need to overqualify myself. I want you guys to know that on this channel, we're not attached to any view per se. Mm -hmm. Like there's an equal argument that you want to have a, a job that pushes you beyond your limits, right? Yeah. We're not saying that that's not a good thing, but I just want you guys to know that we're, we discuss things. You have to realize there's pros and cons to yin and yang, mm -hmm. and you can argue there's good and there's bad about this and on the other side there's also good and there's bad but it's like take it with a grain of salt mm -hmm. right there's always going to be objections about things we say just because we say it doesn't mean it's the belief exactly we hold right i think the perf learning to be to be wise is to be able to hold both ideas at the same time and and see the power and the con of each rather than judging it and saying like mm -hmm. you know this is better than the other yeah right i i think ultimately um what we're trying to do is just share a personal experience. We're not enforcing, yeah. you know, what's right yeah. or wrong. Because there's always two sides of the coin. You can mm -hmm. argue each one, right? And you can argue to the moon and back. But yeah. It's not whether which one is right or wrong. It's just a matter of seeing the both sides for what it is, right? Yeah. And the, like all oh, politics, all that. Anyway, anyway, we'll finish off here. Um, I'll, I'll tell what's been happening on my life in, in the next one. Yeah. See you guys in the next one. Take care, boys. I hope it's still recording. I swear. Oh, that.